This is the Friday, May 27th, 2016 version of the Market Plus segment. Joining us now is Sue Martin. Sue, welcome back. Thank you, Mike. Now, when we left off on the program, I had to cut you off very shortly for that. I apologize. Oh, that's all right. But you were bullish lean hogs. Can you elaborate on that a little bit? Well, I think that the hog market, first off, our slaughter is dr down right now. And as we go through June, our demand seems to be, normally you'll see uh, exports slow up starting in about April to June, and then they start to pick up a little bit, your summer demand and what have you. But um, our exports are really doing quite well. In fact, uh, to Japan, we're up about 35%, and to Canada, 13%, and to uh, Mexico, I don't want me to do this, I think it's 7 or 8%. Hong Kong, we're down. Um, a little bit on that one. We were down 33% here recently. But um, overall, w w our exports are very, very good. And in the meantime, demand for pork domestically still seems to be quite good. Cold storage supplies are down pretty aggressively. And you know, if, if this economy is percolating, like they're saying, well, you know, that then means that that's more food people are going to spend money on. And so I just think we have potential in the hog market. I've always kind of thought we'd get to 85, and then it seemed like we were looking good, and then all of a sudden we were starting to give it up. I'm kind of back to thinking we're going to 85 on the June hogs. Maybe we get higher than that. Maybe we go to 90. I don't know, but 85 is kind of a target I've had, and I still think we can do that. So you'd be fairly aggressive on sales right around 85 I would. Okay. I think so, yeah. Um, but the, the market does hold promise underneath. Um, as far as Chinese expansion, you're not going to probably see that till more next year. So I think that uh, uh, the market looks good as we go towards into fall. I think that we're going to see good demand, especially out of China, pick back up as we get into fall. All right. The other topic we did not get a chance to discuss on the show was the cotton market, which had one of the biggest weeks on to the upside. It has had in ooh, quite some time, 261 higher on the week. Where does that take us from here, Sue? Well, I still think cotton can push higher. Um, I don't see it as a market that's just going to run away, so to speak. But if economy, again, is getting better globally, and they're talking about that it is, and at the G7 meeting, they were even talking about giving a little more push or nudge. But if the economies are starting to percolate a little bit globally, uh, that's positive for cotton because even though the trend turned towards polyester, mainly because of this trend towards yoga, um, bar, um, physical fitness, mm -hmm. And therefore, what do you wear? You wear yoga pants and you wear jogging suits and, that, and that's all polyester. So um, that's been a big trend. But, you know, acres have dropped substantially. Production has dropped substantially. Still, China owns over 45% of the world's cotton. Yeah. But at one time, it was 80. So they've come down a ways. Um, I think that uh, cotton can still edge higher. Do I see it as a market that's really enthusiastic and moves away? Maybe not. Okay, so up here, close to that $65, would you be making some sales? Yeah, and you might even get up towards 70 Okay, you know, so there might be $5 left Yeah, you to might the be able to do some more here. Um, I, I, the markets, just the charts don't have anything on there that's been showing me that this is time to be owning it. Okay. Um, I wish it did, but it doesn't. It just still looks sideways, so to speak. Gotcha. Gotcha. Well, now we do have some questions from our Facebook and Twitter followers. And this one is from Marty in Buxton, North Dakota. He's on Twitter at SatMonster. He says, China's bean and meal markets have crashed the last two days. How can ours hold up here? Well, I think that uh, we have to keep in mind that prices in China were way higher than ours. Uh, they are in Brazil also. And our market is the cheapest. Like corn, for example, we're the cheapest corn market. But I think what it was is what was driving this market for meal was the concern, for example, by Europe. They had not booked their meal needs, and they were like everyone else, believing the story that things weren't going to, you know, they didn't have to hurry. And then the problems with Argentina stepped up to the plate. Farmers haven't been aggressive sellers until, if, if it's true, for Thursday. That would be about one of the first that they really started to let go of some beans for processing. So the processing uh, program in Argentina has been running behind. 
we are the next game in town. So we've been getting that, and that stimulated the meal market to take off and run. When you had this market starting to move, corn, beans, wheat, so to speak, but especially corn and beans and soybean oil, meal was the only one that was about $80 underpriced. So it was out of sync with everything else, and I think that's also part of this rally. It came back into vogue, into sync. But um, when I look at the market, um, I think that meal at that 420 level could have some static there. Um, that's a, and the open interest showed a decline on that update, so that's usually a sign of maybe some selling. Okay. But um, I would say that China's economy, they, you know, they've had such good demand for pork that that's been sufficing. That's why we're exporting like we are, too. Now, for U.S. producers who also were riding that train of, well, I'll just buy meal as I need it because it's 10, 12 bucks cheaper every week, how aggressive should they be today? Do you wait and see if we can catch that static at 420 to pull back? Do you pull the trigger today at 402 and go? I think at this stage of the game, I know on our service, we told subscribers to get their corn needs, end users, to get their corn needs and soy meal booked through all of this year into next year. Okay. And now I would have to say to now we're still telling them get their corn needs done. But now on the bean meal, I would say to them, go, if you haven't done anything, go hand to mouth now. Okay. Because now we've had a huge move. I mean, you've gone over 100 bucks on the meal. Yeah. So it's time to just step back and let's see what can happen here. Um, you might end up getting a nice little correction and then you, you're going to want to step in because should we throw a weather market at this market? And see, the market's also trying to buy bean acres too. Not only here in the U.S., but in South America. Uh, because, you know, the farmer's looking at the taxation. He's in Argentina, probably going to plant more wheat, plant a little more corn, you know, that type of thing. So I think the market's trying to entice the farmer globally to plant more beans. China's going to plant more beans um, at the expense of corn. Mm -hmm. And that's a first in a long time. But, you know, the North China plains are dry. They need rain. Um, I guess I would say... This uh, market does have potential. If you throw a weather market at our U.S. market, boy, that you could get enthusiastic. And if that were to happen, now you could have beans surprising you. If they've had a nice, healthy correction first, you could certainly see beans up around $12. Okay, $12. I mean, realistically, looking at the chart, that's some, that's some technical... 1208 uh, is 12 kind of a target. I will say this. If that comes after we've broken, then that's a very doable... Uh, potential. If November beans keeps moving here and we come back and we take out Thursday's highs and we keep moving, 1109 is the first target to watch and then it's 1144. Those are wave fours on the upside. So depending on how you start or where you start. So um, those will be targets where the market should really run into a, a snag, okay. a pretty good one. But you know, um, another thing, spring highs. Um, you know, since 1970, there have only been two of them that put their spring highs in in June. And in May, the latest date up until this week was May 17th. So here we are, a later date. I'm wondering if we aren't going to push this market in June yet okay. uh, for beans. But, you know, and then maybe you go in for a correction and then we'll see what that uh, fourth quarter, quarterly, not fourth quarter, but quarterly stocks report at the end of June is. Um, but I kind of think that uh, the market is, has, still has potential and, you know, corrections will be, find support. You know, these funds like to window dress right. and at some point you got to take your money and then let it pull back and they do it again. Okay. Well now, Sue, we've got a question here from a new follower or at least a new questioner to the program. This is from Gord in Manitoba, Canada. Welcome, Gord. Uh, he's wondering, he's from Twitter on uh, at BigG44. He says, what will be the high in live cattle for the fourth quarter? <laughs> I love those questions. <laughs> <laughs> um, my crystal ball says, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, you know, you look at this market, and if, if he's asking about, uh, is he asking about feeder cattle? Live cattle, fat cattle. Live cattle, fat cattle. Um, I'm going to say 125 to 130, maybe 130 could be a pretty good price. Um, I haven't, you know, I apologize because 
it's hard to give wave counting back up until you get this market proving itself with a reaction. Okay. And then we can start working out those projections. And we haven't got those yet. We're just starting to feel like we're putting the bottom in. So um, maybe at a later time I can answer that for him. But, okay. But you do we, kind of expect that that 116 to 130 range to I hold think through so. the year. And, you know, and I don't think that's asking the world. Um, because like I say, October fats, a wave four was 108, don't hold me to this, I want to say 108.50 something. Okay. And we got down to 110.80 or something like that. So just a little over $2 from it. That's a pretty darn close target. What that tells me is we probably aren't going much lower in cattle. Okay. In other words, to spend money on being short, the risk is probably greater than the potential. Okay. So I, I think there's something better here. And our monthly charts are very friendly. They've been flat. The indicators we look at are flatlined at, at one, have been there for I don't know how long. And it's just waiting on this weekly chart to clean up, and that thing will turn. And okay. then we should have some power. All right. So we get a lot of questions about market fundamentals and jargon. So we wanted to ask you, what is a bull spread? Well, a bull spread, you know, there's a saying in the markets, you never hold a bull up by its tail. So a bull spread is when the front contracts, usually a lead contract, leads the way. It catches more of the buying immediately. Usually that's prompted by the fact that you have tight supplies, demand exceeds supplies, and therefore the specs go after the front month. And the market's saying to you, bring me what you have to sell because I need it. Don't wait till later. And so that's what a bull spread is. The front contract will lead the way, go premium or invert in the case with like say grains, for example, um, like July beans versus Nove has been bull spreading here up until today. So a bull spread is where the front leads the way, gains on the deferred contract, and eventually can even invert or go premium to the deferred. So if I'm trading a bull spread, I'm buying the nearby, selling, selling the, deferred. the deferred. All right. Well, Sue Martin, thank you so much for taking the time thank to you. join us here this week. Thank you. Thanks to all of you for sending in your questions via Facebook and Twitter. Please continue to do so, and we will get expert analysis straight to you. Thanks for watching, and have a great week.